You are listening to a free version of the Majority Report with Sam Steeter. To support the show and get another 15 minutes of daily program, go to majority.fm, please. The Majority Report with Sam Steeter. It is Wednesday. November 6, 2019. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. Gosh. We are broadcasting live. Steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America. Downtown Brooklyn, USA. You know when you say the same same words all of a time, and then all of a sudden oh, yeah. none of the words make any sense? They like, don't seem like words. What? 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 Food? I don't get that. Anyways, folks, on the program today, Democrats crashed the red wall. Big election victories across the country in an off-year, off-year election. Meanwhile, the House of Card tumbles again. I don't know how it keeps tumbling after it's been knocked over. But even the tiny subsidiary house of cards, even the dog house of cards in the backyard has tumbled as the number one Trump crony, Sunderland, in the entire Ukraine affair, has a sudden quid pro quo recollection. Meanwhile, Iran begins its uranium enrichment as it steps further away from the nuke deal that Trump destroyed. Virginia all blue for the first time in young Brendan's, Brendan's entire life. To be fair, that's only like 18 years. 26 years. Also, left crushes in Pennsylvania. Maybe we'll hear from uh, Mike from PA today. Department of Justice furiously trying to finish its deep state conspiracy report by Thanksgiving. In time to muddy the impeachment waters, good luck. Mike Pompeo, State Department, hates him, and with good reason. He's corrupt AF, as the kids say. AF. Day two of the Roger Stone trial, uh, as opening statements will lift the ball gag from his mouth. That's a uh, deep Roger Stone cut joke. Uh, Rand Paul serves up the whistleblower because he's craven. And an IDW, an early IDW tentpole has collapsed, injuring many right-wing charlatans. All this and more on today's program. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Michael has taken the day off, uh, but everybody else is here uh, today. Um just a reminder, a little bit of house cleaning uh, before we begin. It's uh, obviously a tremendous amount of news. And uh, on if, if this was a uh, Thursday or it was a Monday, we would start with this really shocking. Well, it's shocking insofar as how naked it is and how it undercuts the narrative that the Republicans have been trying to use in this impeachment hearing. They are not doing, look, I, I, they don't have much to work with, but they, um, this is one of those situations where their complete delusion is preventing them from acting as competently, evilly as they would want to. And I will explain when we get there, but a major, major, major problem for them, um, a Trump appointee changed his testimony yesterday, or I should say, uh, uh, w- changed by written testimony, amended his first testimony that he gave on the eve in which it was about to be released publicly. We will talk about that uh, in a moment. We will, of course, get to the election results across the country because it bodes very well for. Um, We should never get too cocky about anything, but it bodes very well for what's happening in this country. Um, Before we do, just a reminder, the AM Quickie is now available on its own feed. Go 
to amquickie.com. Sign up in any way in which you listen to a podcast. You can, of course, listen through the app at majorityapp.com. But go um, go sign up uh, for it through your podcast um, uh, mechanisms so that we have the, uh, the, the ability to to show potential advertisers how many subscribers we have. Also, uh, step in and um, uh, on iTunes, you can give us a review. There, It's back. So if you go to amquickie.com, that'll link you to uh, its iTunes, and you can go in there and leave a review. Much appreciated. Uh, don't forget, this program relies on your support. Uh, when you become a member, not only are you supporting the free show that we ever do, do every day, uh, not only are you getting that show commercial free, and we got some commercials coming up, uh, you're also getting an extra hour and a half or so a day. And on top of that, you are providing us the means in which to expand our offerings like the AM Quickie and other things that we got planned for the future. So uh, all of that helps, and uh, it's much, much appreciated Let's get to this. Are we okay over here? Uh, we're having a YouTube stream problem, so we're quick creating a new event. We're going to keep recording, um, but there's a, we're basically getting, people are getting this error, this video unavailable thing what? going on. So I don't know what's going on there, but we're going to try to create a new event Oh, right that's now. Uh, a little bit scary. We haven't been like a shut down, have we? I hope not. That would be a drag. So uh, picking up where we left off, pardon the interruption as it were. I think that's trademarked. Tony Kornheiser is going to be on. So, look, big night uh, for Democrats. I think people thought it was possible, but highly unlikely that the Democrats would take the governorship in Kentucky. Donald Trump was there just two nights ago. Not last night, but the night before, on the eve of the election. Rand Paul showed up and threatened to out the whistleblower. In fact, I think he probably did in some fashion. Um, Matt Bevin was there, Tea Party guy, the guy who wanted to get rid of Obamacare, the expansion of Medicaid, the guy who uh, assaulted teachers in Kentucky, so much so that they, they kicked off this red state revolt that took place last year. Love those three words together. Indeed. And here is Donald Trump going in. He's got the read the transcript t-shirts behind him. This is all about Trump and all about impeachment. He is bringing the full force. This is a state he won by 30 points in 2016. Do you understand that? 30 points. A national landslide in this country is considered three points. He won in Kentucky by 30 points. Here he is two nights ago, explaining to the, the, the citizens of Kentucky the import of this election. The ones who voted for him, 30 percent. Go ahead. You're sending that big message to the rest of the country. It's so important. You got to get your friends. You got to vote. Because if you lose, it sends a really bad message. It just sends a bad. And they will build it up. Here's the story. If you win, they're going to make it like ho-hum. And if you lose, they're going to say Trump suffered the greatest defeat in the history of the world. This was the greatest. You can't let that happen to me. Well, they did. And Trump suffered the greatest defeat in the history of the world. Uh, they did let it happen. And um, and, and there it is. Uh, Donald Trump um, loses. Let's hear Andy Bashir. Declaring victory in Kentucky last night. Matt Bevin has um, yet to uh, concede, uh, but he's also a tremendous jerk. Understand that Andy Bashir's dad was governor in uh, Kentucky. In fact, was he the one who oversaw the expansion of uh, of Medicaid and the exchanges there? They called it... Um, connect or something so i can't remember exactly they they did not brand it obamacare because they knew and uh bevin assaulted it and bashir ran on on obviously the expansion of medicaid and support for teachers now this is kentucky 
So he's not going to come out and talk about, um, you know, uh, Medicare for all and uh, free college for people. Maybe he should, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. But um, he, again, still has a Republican legislature. But uh, here he is um, talking about the big victory, which is really, as Donald Trump said, the greatest loss that Donald Trump could suffer in the history of the world. Tonight, voters in Kentucky sent a message loud and clear for everyone to hear. It's a message that says our elections don't have to be about right versus left. They are still about right versus wrong. We believe in lifting each other up instead of tearing each other down. And here in Kentucky, we can still fight from the very top levels of government for every family, including the lost, the lonely, and the left behind. Um, a lot of like sort of, um, I don't want to say pablum, but it's it's pablum in many respects. Um, but the reality is that um, you're going to see teachers get a lot more support in Kentucky. Their pension is not going to be under assault. You're going to see um, Medicaid become more generous in Kentucky. So more people are going to get health care. So if, if we got to swallow a little bit of pablum that you could literally fit in to any election in any country at any time, you could even probably drop it into multiple television shows and randomly. And that type of stuff is going to work. It's meaningless. But the real meaning is that there's going to be material benefit for people. And um, it's going to... Um, Here's here's Bashir also giving a shout out to the unions. This is Tonight, good stuff to be heard there. I, I want to say thank you to our union families that helped make this election happen. So, that matters. Yeah. I, do you know what this guy's politics are specifically? Like, is he a John Ossoff type or is he more of a progressive? I, I mean, I would be shocked. If he was um, what we would call a progressive on 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 most things, because because what this says to me is that if a boring like a regular liberal can win in Kentucky, I think a real progressive stands an even better chance. I mean, I maybe, uh, but I don't know. I don't know what the basis of that is. It's possible. But um, you need a tremendous amount of support from uh, not just the voters, but from the apparatus there. And uh, I don't know. Maybe it's possible down or, the road. I mean, if your or dad has to overcome the apparatus, if your dad was a former governor, you might have a lot more leeway to come out for something like Medicare for all. Frankly. I think that's uh, a big part of it. I, I mean, mean, Matt Bevin was uniquely um, hated, you know, and Mitch McConnell. I don't think I mean, look. I think Mitch McConnell can't feel good about this. But I also don't think that Mitch McConnell is terribly, you know, worried about it necessarily. I mean, perhaps insofar as um, there is certain apparatus that are now going to be in control of of Democratic hands. uh, But there was a couple of elements that led to this. Um, But yes, I the the idea that progressives might do better than uh, non-progressives in uh, many places it's possible well especially in a place like kentucky i mean if you want to sort of nationalize this to the 2020 race um i emailed tom from trillbillies yesterday looking for some comment on what we were talking about with regards to kentucky and red states and you know persuasion versus turnout non-voters etc and he pointed out that i don't think this is a controversial point right trump isn't picking up any new voters in kentucky or probably anywhere in 2020 if anything he's losing a little bit of support why why is that uh not controversial uh because he's getting impeached and republicans are starting to retreat from him 
I mean, I think uh, that's the case. I, I mean, um, in Wisconsin, I don't know. Wisconsin, Ben Wickler says that there's still a big pool for him, a reserve for him to draw on. Really? Well, I mean, the journalist, uh, Matt Jones, who was the guest on Trailbillies, thinks so. And he's a pretty smart guy. I don't know. I can't prove it myself. But um, I think Tom is correct in saying if Bernie were to engage the people who haven't voted All before. Right. Let's uh, let's we'll let's save this. I got to do some ads. Yeah. I, I mean, yes, it's possible that Bernie uh, will have more appeal than than Matt Bashar, you know, in, in Kentucky. Like it, it just seems like it bodes well for a coalition of uh, young people and old people for whom the New Deal is still a thing in their minds. I mean, it's possible. Uh, you know, we don't we haven't seen the numbers. I mean, uh, all that we know is that there was a lot more um, uh, people who came out in this election than normal in Kentucky. We don't know the specific numbers quite yet. Uh, and we don't know this in Virginia and across the board. And let's wait until, you know, we make proclamations until we have more information. I mean, I would like to think so. I would like to think everything you're saying is true. It's just that, like, there's not really a substantial basis other than Matt Jones's um, uh, perception. It, it seems possible. Also, just for the record, Tom says he doesn't know anybody in eastern Kentucky who's ever participated in a Gallup poll. There you go. Um, I also have never met anybody who's participated in a poll. And they seem to sometimes work. My mom has, uh, and she always tells me about them, and she's a type of person that will stay on the line for them with them as long as they want. There you she go. she thinks that's democracy. <laughs> hey, folks, one of today's sponsors is BetterHelp. It was giving our audience 10% off their first month when you go to betterhelp.com slash majority report. BetterHelp gives you access to your own fully licensed and accredited therapist via phone, chat, or video. When you sign up, they match you with a therapist based on your specific needs and you'll be communicating with that therapist in less than 24 hours. If you're not happy with your therapist, you can switch to a new one at any time. You can do it, and you can do it for any reason with absolutely no additional charge. They have 3,000 licensed therapists from all over the country, so they got therapists with specialties that may not be available in your area, particularly rural areas, small towns, small cities. You don't have to drive to an office. You don't have to sit around in a waiting room. You can do everything from the comfort of your own home. BetterHelp also tends to be more affordable than traditional in-person therapy, and they have financial aid options if you qualify. They're giving everyone in our audience 10% off your first month when you go to BetterHelp.com slash majority. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash majority report. Also, I we've been uh, advertising for these guys for a long time, actually, now. And uh, just about every set of sheets um, it, that, that I own and not everyone that my ex-wife owns, we have a weird living arrangement with the kids. I'm not going to get into that. But the point is, is that um, we have as much Brooklinen as possible because these sheets are fantastic. Holiday time is coming up. Maybe it's time to gift the ones you love or even yourself because you should love yourself. Something a little cozier. Lucky for you, Brooklinen is delivering comfort all season long. Home of the Internet's favorite sheets, Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. Like I say, I have Brooklinen sheets. I have Brooklinen duvets. I have uh, Brooklyn in towels now. I'm anticipating uh, my Brooklyn in uh, pillows coming in. I'm doing the whole thing now. Like I, I have 40 different types of pillows and like one I like. And so now I'm just going all in and I'm just going to get some uh, all, all Brooklyn in pillows. I, I, I need to let go of some of this stuff in the past and just get, go for what I like. Brooklyn and offers luxury sheets, robes, loungewear and more without the luxury markups. They're even moved beyond the bedroom to offer essentials for your bathroom, like towels, shower curtains, bath mats. Do you like softness, comfort, essentials to help you relax? Brooklinen has it all. I can't recommend their products more. I don't care if you're a graduate or newlywed, friends, family, acquaintances, business uh, colleagues, employees, 
Maybe get a gift for your boss. Maybe your boss is getting new uh, Brooklyn and pillows. Maybe maybe you get him a couple of matching uh, um, pillowcases. Get 10% off and free shipping anytime you shop at brooklinen.com. Use the promo code MAJORITY. Brooklinen is so confident in their product that all their sheets, comforters, and towels come with a lifetime warranty. To get 10% off and free shipping, go to brooklinen.com. That's brooklinen, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Use the promo code MAJORITY. Brooklinen, everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Lastly, I don't know if you have a dog that you don't know much about. Most people don't really know. I mean, I guess if you go and you get it from a breeder, but then even then you don't even know if the breeder's been legit. You have a rescue dog. You wonder about what breed it is. It may be fun to have a magical mystery pup uh, project onto it what its uh, breed is. But when you find out what its breed mix is, you can provide it a better quality of life. The Embark dog DNA test is the best in class dog DNA test. We've got, not only did uh, Kelly give me a testimonial about Embark. This is what she said. She, you, uh, you remember Kelly talking about her dog Edie. So she got uh, Edie's results from Embark. There's so much information about her. She tested clear for all 171 genetic health conditions. They screen for it. She's not a carrier at risk for any of all of the genetic diseases they test. There's also a full clinical trait report. So much great news, but more importantly, I can provide the report to her vet, which will provide so much information to help Edie's health as she grows up. You find out what, what what's the best food to feed the dog. You find out are there potential um, disease risks associated with the breed. We got an email. I'm not, I can't read the whole thing right now, and I've read it in the past, but um, uh, it's a listener. His uh, younger brother, and he says best uh, mate, is 19 years old. He was diagnosed with Asperger when he was five. And he struggled for many years until they got him a dog named Gregor Samsa. That's, uh, I knew Matt would get a kick out of that. Uh, that is the uh, protagonist from the, uh, the Metamorphosis. And um, the dog has been invaluable to uh, Jacob's um, uh, development over the past almost decade now. And they, um, with Embark, it, they used Embark. They got a DNA test. They are now feeding the dog, uh, you know, differently. They are watching out for different diseases. And it is um, so, uh, it, it, it's given them such an incredible peace of mind. I mean, it, it's, you know, sometimes we do ads and we get responses. This was really, really impressive. Bark's test is, is worth it. It's the most comprehensive on the market, developed by doctors and veterinarians. It tests for over 250 breeds and 170 genetic conditions. Competitors can get down to a 12% of a breed mix, and Bark's can get down to accurate to a 5% breed component in a mixed breed dog's ancestry. Um, and Bark has an exclusive listener uh, offer for our listeners. You can go to EmbarkVet.com. EmbarkVet.com. Use the promo code MAJORITY. Save 15% off your dog DNA test. That's EmbarkVet.com with promo code MAJORITY. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Um, All right, let's get back into uh, what happened last night around the country. As you know, uh, Donald Trump loses in, or I should say, Matt Bevin loses in Kentucky. Now, and, and at one point, look, Trump went to Mississippi, too, I think it was, right? And uh, in Mississippi, the race was a lot closer than one would anticipate for a governor's race there. I think the uh, Democrat lost by about nine points. But when he was in Mississippi, he made the point of saying, um, what am I doing in Mississippi? And it's true. Like, they don't send the president in unless it's important to them. I mean, I hope people understand this. When Donald Trump goes to Kentucky, a state he won by 30 points, he's not doing this for himself. He doesn't need to go to Kentucky. He needs to go to Wisconsin, or he needs to go to Michigan, or he needs to go to Pennsylvania, or he needs to go to Arizona or Florida. He goes to Kentucky. He's going for Matt Bevin. 
When he goes to Mississippi, he's going for the Republican governor of Mississippi. And he lost last night. Here's Matt Bevin um, basically warning people. And this is to to, uh, Jamie's point that just as impeachment failed, so too does Matt Bevin's trying to associate Andy Bashir with the coming red scourge. Hi, this is Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin. Today, Sunday, Bernie Sanders, crazy Bernie, is going to be here in Kentucky. He's here protesting business. He's protesting those who create jobs and opportunity. He thinks that everything should be free. Somehow the job creators should be punished and the people who do or don't work to varying degrees should get everything for free doesn't work that way. Anytime someone gets something for free, someone else is paying for it. In this race in 2019 here in Kentucky, you also have people on both sides of this equation. Andy Bashir, who's in line with Bernie Sanders, they share the same party, the same ideology. They share the same values on many fronts. They're both strongly pro-abortion. They both strongly believe your Second Amendment rights should be restricted. They strongly believe that you are people who should be punished if somehow you're out there uh, pursuing the American dream. These are the kind of things that we want to reject here in Kentucky, not only with Crazy Bernie, but with Andy Bashir this fall in November. This is an opportunity for you to choose, not only in 2019, but again in 2020. The American dream is a real thing. Of and by and for the people really works if we the people take it seriously. Exercise your right to vote. Get out there and let your voice be heard. Now, I think he's referencing when he says that Crazy Bernie is coming to town. I think he's talking about the Black Jewel Miners, because I think at one point he came in to show some solidarity with them. And how crazy. And Bashir was promoting aspects, my understanding of of the Green New Deal. I don't think he was, you know, I don't think he was having rallies with uh, AOC. But. He was promoting aspects of this, and Bashir did quite well, relatively speaking, in parts of coal country there. So, um, you know, I it's definitely a good sign. I don't know uh, what it means directly, and I don't think that uh, if Bernie Sanders is the nominee, that Kentucky is going to go blue, but. It's quite conceivable that there are areas where they're going to have to put more resources in than they would otherwise. I mean, just this is the example. When Donald Trump goes to Mississippi, when Donald Trump goes to Kentucky, deep red states that he won by tens of percentage points. He's he is expending resources that could be deployed somewhere else. And in this instance, they were completely wasted resources. Every time Donald Trump goes and campaigns for somebody and they lose, it sends a message to other Republicans like, wait a second, maybe he can't help me. Now, the question is for them is maybe he can still hurt me, though. And that is what's going to make uh, the impeachment inquiry so difficult for Republicans. They are jammed. And it's quite clear. Here's here's Donald Trump in Kentucky. Is this where he's talking about? Uh, uh, this is where he's talking about the the impeachment, right? Here it is. He brings out. I mean, they put everybody behind them in a read the transcript t shirt. Okay, this is about impeachment for him. Play it. And what's happened to so many other places run by the radical left Democrats? It's unbelievable. Los Angeles. You take a look at Los Angeles. Looks like a third world city. But go back to Nancy's area. Look at what's happened. There's been no place in the country that's gone down like the area that Nancy Pelosi represents. And she's wasting all of her time. And you know what? It's backfiring. You see it. But the media and the Democrats have launched an even more brazen assault on our nation with a deranged, hyper-partisan, Impeachment with Hunt. Impeachment. Thank you. There it is. Impeachment witch hunt. Um, read the transcript. It says every T-shirt that they have behind Donald Trump. And uh, 
So impeachment fails to motivate the Republican base enough in uh, Kentucky. Trump fails to motivate the Republican base. Now, maybe he can bring them out for him. But six months ago, would anybody say maybe Republican voters in Kentucky will come out for Donald Trump? The guy won by 30 points. 30 points. Well, it seems, if anything, it's demotivating people, right? Like you just cited a poll the other day saying that Trump is losing the support of Republicans, which I never expected to happen. I, I mean, it is it's it's starting to erode, uh, erode some of their enthusiasm. We will see. And I would be very, very surprised if any first time voters came out and they were like, you know what? I think I'm going to vote for Trump now, not in 2016. I, You know, I tend to think that, too. I thought there but there's so many of those people out there who it's just a question of who I think are motivated who are angry and we can, uh, you know, uh, people can can theorize and, and make assessments as to why they're angry um, and uh, why their rage towards uh, people who don't look like them uh, is uh, misplaced. But I think that there's still a lot of people out there. And I think to a certain extent, part of it is, can he reach them and convince them that he is he is going to in some way further their agenda we will get to this because we still have, well, here, here, we'll get to the, well, let's get to this now. This is a, uh, some Pennsylvania voters in swing districts speaking out about impeachment. Now, before we get to that clip, we'll get to that in a minute. I want to talk about what happened in Pennsylvania last night and maybe we'll get, um, uh, Mike from PA will call in hopefully. There was a bunch of stuff that happened. The uh, Democrats now will hold all five seats on the Delaware County Council. This has been, according to the uh, Inky, they call it, uh, a Republican stronghold since the Civil War. Now, Republicans in the Civil War were actually pretty good. Uh, they were very progressive. In fact, a lot of the things that we perceive today as being sort of like, you know, parts of modern society, public school, was a function of these Republicans uh, in uh, during Reconstruction. Uh, so that's a, uh, there's a long realignment there. A lot of people there. don't know that. Yep. Uh, in Bucks County, Democrats also held a late lead for control of the Board of Commissioners in a close race. And in Philadelphia, this is really interesting. The Intercept wrote about this a couple of days ago. It gets a little bit uh, weedy. But uh, it's 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 really it's relevant. In Philadelphia, they have district specific city council seats, and then they have, I think, like a half a dozen at large seats. That's a fairly common uh, feature, I think, in uh, municipal elections. They have this thing where if you are part of the party and they don't. All of them don't come up at the same time. I think they rotate. If you are a member of the uh, minority party or a minority party in the district, so I think it could be just based on registration or it could be a number of seats. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, they reserve two seats for you on the at-large, and it has been traditionally the Republicans. Democrats get the other uh, at-large seats and Republicans get two at-large seats. The two top Republican candidates in the minority party will get it. Now, it doesn't say Republicans. It says minority party. Well, the WFP is also a minority party in Philadelphia. And they ran two candidates this year uh, that were opposed by Republicans, I mean, excuse me, by by Democrats, because the Democrats supposedly were worried that they were going to eat away at their at large uh, votes for the other uh, Democrats. Now, most observers say that's ridiculous. There's so many Democrats that's not going to happen. They're not going to be able to peel these votes off. And 
But what happened is one of them got endorsed by uh, Elizabeth Warren. Bernie Sanders did not endorse either one of them. Uh, Warren only endorsed one of them. A couple of Democrats endorsed one of them from the WFP. And this is and Larry Krasner endorsed um, one of them as well. Brooks was her name. There were two people who ran, Kendra Brooks and Nicholas O'Rourke. O'Rourke barely lost, but Brooks, Kendra Brooks ran, won. Now, I think the Democrats there did not want a left flank on the city council. I suspect Bernie didn't endorse um, these folks because maybe in part of the WFP national endorsement, maybe in part because he is running in a Democratic uh, primary and needs the support of some of the infrastructure of the Democratic Party and was doing them a solid. Regardless, the this pushes the Philadelphia City Council to the left. And this is a big deal. Um, you need a lot of votes in Philadelphia to take uh, Pennsylvania as a state, both, you know, in a presidential election and statewide elections. And uh, this is good. This is the way things get um, moved to the left across that entire state. Also, in Virginia, I think most people know this story, but for the first time in 26 years, Democrats took full control of the state government. They have the House, they have the Senate, and they have the governorship. The GOP had a 20 to 19 majority in the state Senate and a 51 to 48 in the House of Delegates. It is now 21 to 18 in the Senate, Democrats to Republicans, and in the House of Delegates, 54 to 44 Republicans with two that have not been called yet. So Democrats flipped five seats at least in the House of Delegates, two in the state Senate. That's a big deal. People have been anticipating this, but it's a big deal because not the least of which restrictions on Medicaid that were imposed by the Republican House and Senate there will be lifted. Not the least of which because Democrats will control the redistricting in a purple state. And that makes a big difference in terms of the uh, House delegations. And um, uh, folks like Lee Carter and Danica Rome, who won in the 2017 elections. Um, Lee Carter, full on. DSA member, but a full on more more socially socialist than even the DSA. Uh and well, uh, we have everything. And Denica Rome, um, the first transgender woman to win a reelection to a statewide seat uh in the country, I think. Um she ran a great campaign. They I mean obviously they both did, uh, but their reelection is uh a big deal. A really big deal. Because you can get these one-offs. The real question is, how durable is it? And once again, it puts the lie to the idea perpetuated by some that in order to win in a swing state or a swing district, you have to be in the middle. That's right. Well, I mean, I think we got a lot of evidence in 2018 uh, that those people who tried to do that. I I mean, I, I frankly think that at the end of the day, a lot of this is more partisan than it is ideological. And so. Yeah, that's part of why. Yeah. And I think that's uh, uh, and, and and we're starting to see this happen. I think there, th- that awareness, I think, is, is catching on on a national level. We'll talk about this later. But uh, there was a new poll that came out today. Monmouth uh, survey, I think, that. Um, shows uh, that, A, the new national Monmouth poll shows that Sanders is now essentially back in uh, the race. Biden and Warren at 23 percent, Sanders at 20 percent. Warren is down five in that poll. 
Sanders is up uh, five in that poll. This was just, I think, my sense was when you started to see the uh, establishment start to attack Warren because they thought that she was the biggest threat on the left. And this is also uh, relevant. Uh, The electability quotient that they've developed, the Monmouth, the Democratic electability rating, this is the likelihood of defeating Trump on a scale of 0 to 10. This is Democratic voters nationwide, their perception of someone's electability. Sanders has gone up. Biden's at 7.3. He's always been up there. It's dropped. Warren's at 7.1. Sanders is at 7.0. So for all intents and purposes, you have three front leaders who are who are basically tied in the national polls you know this is just one poll but um this has sort of been the trends you have them equally distributed maybe bernie in the first couple of uh primaries first you know if you look four or five uh is in the lead in in, in two or three Warren in one or two, Biden in one. They are more or less tied, but I think there is broad consensus, at least amongst you know those who are watching this intensely, that Biden is bleeding, is leaking oil, continuing, that Warren's surge is not necessarily as durable as it looked. And that Bernie's creeping up and in creeping up. He's not, he's not surging. He's creeping, but you have to remember they all have different strategies that they are, they are, they at least are ascribed to them. Biden's is I'm going to hide (laughs) and hope that uh, my name recognition carries me across the finish line. Uh, Warren is that I'm going to run on a uh, technocratic um, competency and a uh, a more palatable version of fighting. Palatable, I put in quotes. Bernie's um, strategy has been one that is, and I, I, I have no way of knowing, and nobody really does. Strategy has been, we're going to build a different type of ground game that's going to reach different people and is going to be subterranean in many respects. So we won't know until we get to Iowa as to, you know, what is resonating. You know, particularly when one person's running with with a strategy that's a little more subterranean, it's hard to assess. The proof will be in the pudding. All right, let me just get to uh, the big impeachment news before we go to the fun half. Because um, and then we'll we'll do a little bit more on uh, the election. There's a couple of like uh, tidbits from around the country that are relevant. Uh, Cause Shama Swant in um, uh, Seattle, it doesn't look great, but the mail-in votes tend to be uh, more uh, progressive than uh, election day votes. She's down by I think about I don't know six seven points. Uh, Amazon spent a million dollars. 1.5. That's that, that, that we see, right. right. That is like explicit, um, to make sure that she didn't get reelected, but we will see if they prevailed, uh, within, um, it'll take us a little time. The council was considering a tax that would have cost Amazon $10 million a year. There you go. So mathematics folks. There you go. And it's not, you know what? Like, look. It's, it's also not, the principle of the thing. It's the the principle and the precedent. Because I don't think they're worried about $10 million. Like, with all due respect, right. um, what's his face? Jeff Bezos? That's the stuff that falls out of his pocket when he takes a dump. Uh, you know, like, oh, where did, where did that million dollar bill go? Eh, whatever. I'm not going to, I'm not going to. It's the same reason the Koch brothers fight public transportation every single place. You need yeah. to do it because you do. You want to set the precedent. 
that if you mess with us, you will lose. So whether that's in New York or what, I mean, that, that, that is the issue. It's the precedent. I still, um, I would interview Shannon Moore from Alaska multiple times. And she told me the story of Pebble Mine. And she once confronted the lawyers there. Like, why are you guys fighting this? This is like, it doesn't have that much value to you. And it's the, it's literally the biggest resource of fresh fish that we have in this country that could be damaged. And they're like, we don't care about Pebble Mine. But we just can't lose this one because it means we're going to lose a bunch of others. Yeah. And so that people have to keep that in mind. Um, they're making th- – that's the Fonzie rule, right? Yeah, I mean, why did companies buy workers off in the 1970s every time they struck for more control over production and over their lives? It might not necessarily have cost them anything up front. It set a bad precedent. Exactly. They don't want to show that workers have the power to withhold their labor. All right, so let's move to impeachment. This is um, This is pretty stunning. You don't see this very often. So Gordon Sondland, he goes in front of the House Intelligence Committee. He gives a private deposition. Well, this is about three weeks ago, right? Gordon Sondland, again, I'll remind you, the hotelier who gave a million dollars to Donald Trump's inauguration committee was named ambassador to the EU, then was basically given a sort of ex officio, you're ambassador to Ukraine, you're going to run the shadow group that is going to be running a shadow foreign policy with them. He is the one who was on the uh, text chain with Bill Taylor, and we haven't seen Bill Taylor's deposition. Bill Taylor was the outsider, the career diplomat who was brought in. And he was like the Serpico in this uh, sort of cabal, if you will. He was the the... The cop who was like, wait, what? And Bill Taylor is going to, they just announced next Wednesday, a week from today, will be the first public hearing. I'm surprised by that. Maybe they felt that we're just going to go for the, we're going to go for the, the, the slam dunk. And they're going to have George Kent, who's the deputy secretary of state of, uh, 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 He's from the State Department. We'll get into that in a minute. So Sunlin, in his original testimony, gave a lot of like, I don't recalls. And no, it wasn't a quid pro quo. Look, when we say quid pro quo, what we're saying is bribery. Or in this case, extortion, which is like just a variant of a bribe. It is. Extortion is I will withhold or keep something from you that is already due you unless you give me something that I want. Bribery is give me something that I want and I'll give you something that you want. It's, it, you know, it, extortion is to bribery as like a, uh, a shepherd, uh, uh, you know, a German shepherd is to dogs. It's like bribery with more leverage. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a form of bribery. And... That's relevant because bribery is one of those things explicitly listed as a reason for impeachment in the Constitution. So Sunland gave this testimony, and then they announced, we're going to release the testimony tomorrow. And he had his lawyers draft up a new statement. Because initially... Sunlin had been squirrely in denying that he was implementing this direct quid pro quo. Here's his new statement. Also, I, I now do recall a conversation on September 1 of 2019 in Warsaw with the uh, presidential aide, the Ukrainian Yermak. And uh, this brief pull aside conversation followed a larger meeting involving the vice president Pence and president Zelensky in which Zelensky had raised the issue of suspension of us aid to Ukraine directly with vice president Pence. After that large meeting, I now recall sometimes these things are foggy speaking individually with Mr. Yermak, where I said that resumption of us aid would likely not occur until Ukraine provided the public anti-corruption statement that we had been discussing for many weeks. 
Now, I want to remind you folks of something. And this was clear a couple of weeks ago. Donald Trump can say that he was worried about corruption all he wants. The only ask they had was not an actual investigation. It was a claim of an investigation. We don't need to see the investigation. We need you to claim that there is an investigation. You can do whatever you want. But we want to pretend that Joe Biden and Hunter Biden did something wrong here. So we need you to claim there's an investigation. We also need you to claim there's an investigation in 2016 because we want to refute the findings that Russia interfered in the election. This is why they have George P. Kent testifying from the State Department. Because when the CIA and other agencies that came out with the declarative statement that Russia interfered in the 2016 election that ended up in the Mueller report, the guy in charge of the CIA was Mike Pompeo, who now at the State Department is essentially opening the door for Bill Barr and Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani to create a fiction about Ukrainian involvement in the 2016 election and their attempts to frame the Russians. And that is why he allowed all the disinformation campaign on the then former ambassador to Ukraine to get her out of the way So that Rudy Giuliani and his drug deal cabal, as John Bolton would say, could go in and do what they were doing. So Sunland now has backed off. He also said, I also recall some question as to whether the public statement could come in the newly appointed Ukrainian prosecutor general rather than from the president directly. Soon thereafter, I came to understand, in fact, that the public statement would need to come directly from the president himself. I believe that that information may have come from Giuliani or Ambassador Volker, who may have discussed it with Giuliani. In other words, Giuliani is running the policy. Rudy Giuliani does not work for the U.S. government. Volker's um, testimony was also uh, released yesterday. But here is what uh, Sunland testified back in the day where he went up to the line of saying it was a quid pro quo. Now he's crossed that line. And a reminder, Sunland is not a deep state apparatchik. He is a hotelier who is a um, good friend of Donald Trump's until yesterday. Sunland had testified originally that Trump and Giuliani's positions, quote, kept getting more insidious. Evolving from a general interest in fighting corruption to an interest in Burisma and finally to an investigation of the Bidens. He noted he was not a lawyer, but he said, quote, he assumed that an effort to pressure Ukraine to do so as pursued by Giuliani with Trump's support would be illegal. Um, that's also problematic because Sunland then knew that what he was doing was wrong. And he knew that what they were doing was wrong. So this is um, a real problem. And all you're going to hear now is like they're going to agree that there was a quid pro quo because they have no other argument. They're going to say that's not that big of a deal. And then they're going to try. They're going to bring Jeff Jordan or Mark Meadows or one of these other idiots onto the Intelligence Committee. And they're going to try and make it about uh, the Bidens. And if they want to do that, I would say. Okay, because at the end of the day, and nothing we saw yesterday um, changes my mind about this. In fact, it reinforces it. The only thing, ultimately, that's going to matter about impeachment is a half a dozen Senate races, maybe seven, maybe more. And maybe, I don't know, a half a dozen or a dozen uh, House races. And in the vast majority of those cases, it's going to be a massive liability for anybody who voted to protect Trump. 
Because this is not about impeachment is not about convincing Republicans. And that may happen. There may be some who are just like, he's impeached. Uh, That's gross. I'm not going to do that. But it also may inspire some people to come out and defend him. We have clips of this. But what it's going to do is it's going to make purple state Republicans who don't want to be tied to Donald Trump. They don't want him, his arm around their waist as they go around and campaign. They've got to make a decision to vote. And if they vote for his impeachment, they're going to lose 20% of their base. And if they vote against impeachment, they're going to be tied with Donald Trump. They're going to be little Trumps, mini Trumps. That's a real problem for them. With worse delivery of nicknames. And it doesn't matter if Joe Biden, if Mark Meadows gets on there and holds up a, a, you know, a, a machine gun with Joe Biden's fingerprints on it. And he was the one who took out, you know, whatever, uh, half the cabinet of uh, Ukraine so that Hunter Biden could steal the country's goal. It doesn't. And, you know, whatever fiction they're going to create here, it's irrelevant. To how those senators vote, because they can't say. I voted to protect Donald Trump because Hunter Biden's crooked. That's just not going to work. Particularly if Joe Biden's not the nominee. And that's the name of the game here. Everything else is either gravy or window dressing. Those senators are the one who are really scared by all this because When Bill Taylor gets out there and says this, and there is no witnesses to refute what he's saying, um, Donald Trump's got some problems. And and I have a feeling that could just be the beginning. All right, we're going to take a big, uh, quick break, head into the fun half of the program. We're going to take your phone calls. We're going to play some clips. We've got, um, I, I don't know what's going on with Steve Ducey. But I feel like we're watching him turn in real time, all of them. Um, and something that's just going to, I think, like leave your mouth agape, some uh, swing district Trump supporters who are just, they can't quit him, folks. They cannot quit him. They will not quit him. It's simply not going to happen. Also, we got more updates on other uh, election news and more. Hopefully we'll get... Um, some calls from people on the ground and maybe in Kentucky and in Pennsylvania, get a sense of what's happened there. Um, Just a reminder, it is your support that makes this show possible. When you join the majority report, you support the free show. You support other people who frankly don't have the means. Sometimes they're students. Sometimes they've lost a job. Sometimes they're caring for a parent. Um, Our members basically carry and they're not huge costs to um, to carry the the bandwidth and whatnot that's involved in this, but they're they exist. Uh, our members do that, and uh, you also get the show without commercials. You get the extended show, um, and hopefully more and more as we go on. So it's jointhemajorityreport.com. dot com. Don't forget am quickie am dot com. Sign up for that. Big help to us. Much appreciated. Just coffee dot co op. Fair trade coffee, tea, or chocolate. Use the coupon code majority get ten percent off. Follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. That also helps. And lastly, as I said earlier, knowing your bre- your dog breeds mix can help you provide a better quality of life for your dog, for your best friend. And the Embark Dog DNA Test is the best-in-class dog DNA test. It's developed by doctors and veterinarians, tests for over 250 breeds, over 170 genetic health conditions, It's the only research-grade dog DNA test on the market. You can save 15% on a dog DNA test right now. Go to EmbarkVet.com. Use the promo code MAJORITY. EmbarkVet.com. Use the promo code MAJORITY. As always, we'll put links into the um, uh, podcast description, YouTube description. Uh, Last night uh, was Tuesday. Uh, Crystal Ball was on uh, TMBS. Uh, no, Abby Martin. Abby Martin. Uh, oh, sorry, on that her was the week Gaza before. documentary and uh, Adolf Reed, big long interview with him. And uh, Nando Vila was in the post game. 
Um, I'll just do my plug right away because more importantly than uh, TMBS, Literary Hangover. Go subscribe Boom. to that. Uh, did a Salem Witch Trials episode. Uh, Going to do The Crucible in a little bit. And also Afra Ben, uh, who is, you guys heard of her? She was uh, an early example of a spy who then wrote literature in the in the restoration period of uh, England. Wow. And she wrote uh, uh, one play about uh, Suriname uh Call, it was called Orinoco or the Royal Slave about a slave who was also had royal lineage. So, you know, it was a kind of like anti-slavery, a, but like pro-monarchy sort of thing, which was, just, you know. It's either or, I think, a lot of times. Yeah. It's a woke monarchy. But she was like a, I and mean, she was one of the er- first Tories. So she's mixed politically, but she is uh, definitely a sort of feminist, uh, early feminist. The first uh, professional playwright, I think you could say, as a woman in England. So we're going to be talking about her. In so she was a member of the professional managerial class. Exactly. She was a PMC. <laughs> and very strong PMC <laughs> energy from uh, Afro Ben. So. Uh. Jamie. This week on the Antifada, Sean KB is joined by fellow building tradesmen Billy and John to do a little workers' inquiry on themselves. They discuss their own work histories and how they became radicalized through historical events and their experiences on the job. They poke holes in the J.D. Vance white working class mythos that sees cultural regression as the wellspring of Trumpism. And lastly, they talk about the structures they've encountered in their particular unions and how the working class might overcome the provincialism and conservatism of business unionism. It's a scorcher, folks. Check it out. All right, folks. See you in the fun half. You are in for it. All right, folks. 646-257-3920. See you in the fun half. Alpha males are back, 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 boy, back, and the alpha males are back, back, just as delicious as you can imagine. The alpha males are back, 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 boy, back, and the alpha males are back, 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 back. Just wanna degrade the white man. Alpha males are back, back. I take all of it in my throat. Alpha males are back. Says what? The alpha males are back, 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 back. You are a madman. And the alpha males are back, back, back. I, 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 I am a total cunt. Can we bring back DJ Danner song, please? Yeah, or a couple of them. Just put them in rotation. DJ Danner. Well, the problem with those is they're like 45 seconds long, so I don't know if they're enough of a break. That's fucking nonsense. Hey, folks, fucking reminder. I do not have Parkinson's. And the alpha males are psych. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> Almost says what? 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 Have you tried doing an impression on a college campus? I, I think that there's no reason why reasonable people across the divide can't all agree with this. Psych. And the alpha males are back, 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 back. And the Africans are black, 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 black African. And the alpha males are back, 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 back. And the Africans are black, 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 black. Donald Trump out there, doesn't a little part of you think that America deserves to be taken over by jihadists? Keep it at 100. Can't knock the hustle. Come on! Fuck them! Fuck them! Fuck them! Fuck them! Fuck them! Things I do for the bigger game plan. By the way, it's my birthday! It's my birthday! Okay. Happy birthday to me, Jew boy! I have a thought experiment for you. And the alpha males are back. Back. Africans are black. Black. Alpha males are back. Back. Africans are black. Pussy, 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 pussy